We have made it to the Pirate Stronghold. Nice pan view of this intimidating structure. Even the nostrils have teeth! This is easily as scary as I thought. But if you think about it, they should be all dead. I'm out of the time shift stone. He has a good point. Yep, the pirates are dead. The pirates are dead. The pirates are dead. We put poisonous gases. And we... Uh, <laughs> Oh man, I can't remember the lyrics of the song! Oh, it's such a good song. I love that song. See, humans are dead, but anyway. The hook beetle can't go out that far. Apparently this is called the tough beetle. I checked after the last recording. But anyway. Just activating the bird statue for convenience if we ever want to zoom ourselves down here. There's a there is a monster claw somewhere. Where did it fall? Dang it. I want that monster. There it is. Gotcha. Monster claws don't get away from me that easily. Yep, some regular keys. The pirates didn't have any of those fancy enemies. All they could afford were the normal keys. Oh, I heard a monster claw drop again. Alright, where is that little bugger? Where are ya? Where is that monster claw? Yeah, I want my monster claw! Alright, it's probably gone. Oh, I heard it again. There it is. Gotcha. Alright. <laughs> anyway, up here down... I mean, up here by the nostrils. Little known secret, if you have your beetle go through the nostril without taking too much damage, you can get 100 rupees. 200 rupees! 300 rupees! Yep. You can get 300 rupees. Oh, 305 rupees. Yep, big money. Link's a, Link's a big high roller. Is that what they call it for the poker term? Anyway, over here is where you want to enter in the pirate stronghold. You can't enter by the teeth. Also, if you're traveling by the teeth, be very careful because there is quicksand at the base of the teeth and you can actually fall in and die. It's not like I know from experience. Master, please take a look. I'm looking. This device looks like it is meant to hold the time shift stone. But there's no one currently installed. There's a 95% chance that it is the same type of device as the one we encounter in the neighbor mine. Signs indicate that the time shift stones were used in this facility as a kind of power source. Alright, thank you for the help. So we're going to be dealing with some more time shift mechanics, and we're going to be experiencing blah, 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 blah. we're going to be experiencing some amazing Nintendo Zelda puzzle dungeon puzzles. Yep, wouldn't be Zelda without amazing. Oh, hey, Larry and Bob! It's Larry and Bob. Oh, no synchronized attack this time. I guess Bob doesn't really want to tell. Oh, there he goes. Bob's going to town, and so is Larry. All right, let's Bob and Larry. You got a few good hits in, but not enough to take me out. Bye, Bob. Bye, Larry. Alright. Yep, so now we're in another mini dungeon, and this is puzzle-oriented. It's fun. It's really fun. I love this place. I mean, just imagine if you're a pirate in this area. Imagine all the work you have to do in order to get through here. Hey, Jim! Jim the pirate. Did you happen to catch the memo about the puzzle they installed in room 5? Nope. Nope, didn't catch that one. It's a doozy. Anyway, that's what I would imagine the workers to sound like, the pirates to sound like if they had <laughs> Jim the Pirate. That's a terrible pirate name. I don't know what made me think that that would be a good name. I don't know, it's not like some casual office space or anything. Oh yeah, Jim, did you get those memos from corporate? Oh, Jim, did you plunder the village? Did you get the rum that you needed? Yep. Sadly, you can't claw shot onto this time shift orb like you could in Twilight Princess with the souls. SOLs, not SOULs. That'd be pretty disgusting if you could battle or grab souls with your claw shots. But anyway. So now we're going to be activating some Techno Blends. And because of this, I want to get out my Sacred Shield. So it's very good to bring a Wooden Shield or a Sacred Shield with you in this place. If you have your Iron Shield, tough luck. It's probably going to be very difficult in this area. Because you're going to be doing some really precise sword 
maneuvers. And that guy was totally outside of the time shift zone. I actually sent him to the future. I'm Doc. And he's Marty McFly. Oh, that's such a good movie. Do do do. I would select for me, pillage and plunder, and all that good stuff. And really rotten eggs. Turn around and let's move on. These quarters can be your worst enemy, because just around the corners you might experience some enemies like these Beemos. Oh man, and let me tell you, Beemos, they are so annoying. I don't know, I don't mean, they're really fun because they're like a puzzle in themselves, but man, I hate these guys so much. They can destroy the shield so quickly. I mean, I've been, I was practicing this little dungeon before recording, and man, it was, my shield was destroyed, so I had to restart. Anyway, in order to grab this chest, you cannot bring the orb with you. So you have to set around at like a certain distance or else the electric field will be established and you can't get through because of the fence. And I'll just quickly show you like how that works. Yep, see you can't do that. You have to walk away and yeah it goes. It goes away. But anyway, for all that hard work and figuring out that puzzle, you get some good money. And down here we have some ancient flowers. Um, we actually want to collect as many of these as you can because we're going to be using these to upgrade a few items very soon. Not very soon, but I mean soon enough. In order to get across to the other side of the room, you're going to have to carry the orb with you and jump carefully across these platforms. Make sure you align yourself or else you'll fall off and you have to restart from the very beginning of the room again. And there you go. Oh, I saw an ancient flower. Where are you? There you go. Well, I have to start all over again. But anyway, this is how you start over. It's not really, it's not really like, not a problem to start over. And I get to start over again. Because starting over once wasn't fun enough, starting over twice is just the right amount. Yeah. Alright, line myself. There we go. Link aligns himself. That was weird. He, like, sometimes aligns himself. He auto aligns himself sometimes. Yeah, I mean, okay. I don't know if I'm just seeing things or if I'm, I don't know, if I'm just making something big deal as it is. Alright, for this room, this is a little bit interesting. You want to leave the time shift orb here. Because you cannot bring it past this little area because of the electric gates. And just to prove to you why you can't leave, bring the orb with you. So it's probably better to show you than to actually tell you. Leave it directly at the gate. Make sure you leave it directly at the gate because once you get there you can pull on this lever. You can just run up to it. I don't want to use that. I just want to use the whip because I love using the whip. Yeah. There's no need to actually pull out the whip for this, but... I mean, if you... If you can use a whip, why not? And in this room we have a lot of quicksand and we're going to be having some spawning Deku Babas. Now here, there, I'm sure there's another way to do this, but I always find that getting this chest, you just leave the orb at a certain distance like we did with at the gate and the other chest and you can just grab whatever's inside. I don't really know what's in here. Oh, a monster horn. Okay, we're going to be getting quite a few of these in this little, I mean not this area, but in this portion of the game. We have currently four, we're gonna be getting like 12 or 13, I probably don't. Anyway, yeah, we got some Deku Babas. Easy as pie. So pie's not really that easy, but... And we have to maneuver our way around these... ...little appearing platforms. Alright, horizontal, there we go. Oh, there's another one. Okay, vertical slash. No, you don't get a cheap hit on me like that. Sometimes, some Deku Babas you get like two attacks in. I, I don't understand how they can do that. I feel like they're always programmed for one, but... Come on. Come on. That little bleeping sound, that just means that your shield's like restored its durability all the way. Alright. Oh, three Deku Babas and a... I mean, two Deku Babas and a Quadra Baba. Oh man, they're really pulling all the... They're, they're really like calling all the shots here with all their enemies. And these pirates have their, <laughs> their stronghold really fortified. They actually proved the stronghold of Link inaccessible. And we also have Techno Blin here. Man, three Deku Babas and a Techno Blin. They gotta try harder than that. Really, they do. And I want that heart. Alright, good. Oh, another one. <laughs> that Deku Baba just fails at life, period. He's like so close, yet so far. And that one also failed. He just completely missed me. How does he. How did he miss, like, right there? 
Anyway, it's funny with these Electro Beams, you can just like, bring the Time Shift Stone close to them and they'll just die. They'll, they'll cease to exist. Yep, I can make you exist and I can take your existence away. We got a Jelly Blob, I bet. Yep. Alright, Techno Blend, just attack me, please! There we go. Now you did. Alright. Electro Spume, now you die too. Another Electro Spume, you die as well. There's no hiding from me! Master of Death. You know, Link should just be the Grim Reaper. He's pretty good at killing. I don't know. But they're enemies, so I guess you can justify. I guess. I guess? Anyway, here this is a little bit of a more of a complicated puzzle. We have another one of those electric gate proximity time shift stone puzzles. So just take it close as possible to the door without actually activating the electric field. And I just briefly ran over the stone and they have to show me this. Yep, <laughs> I'm not even standing on the switch anymore and it's like, oh, gotta do that. But anyway, we have to put this block on the switch. Yes, one of the very few block switch puzzles in the entire game. And here it is. And if we're putting the switch, we have the gate closed on us. That's why if you bring the time shift stone close enough, you don't have to worry about falling into the quicksand. Let's grab the time shift stone and let's make our move. Let's move on. Is there a Beemos in here? Nope, there isn't. This. There are some Beemos in the next room, so be very careful here. Um, there it is. Alright. Alright, I like to pull out my shield and sword and- oh, there's one right there. Alright, buddy. Come on. I could've just gone up and attacked him, but I like the daze zone. It's like they have one moment in their life where they're like, no, oh, and then they die. Alright. Same old, same old Beemos. There's really no difference to these guys. There's also never any, like, upgraded Beemos. I mean, they're hard as is. So, I mean, really, no, there's no point upgrading them. Anyway, here you want to drop the Time Shift Stone right there. Because in the next room... If the Time Shift Stone is not in the place that we just put it, there would be some barbed wire covering that switch. So you want to pull the... You want to make the barbed wire go away with the Time Shift Stone. Because apparently barbed wire comes after a thousand years or so. I don't, I don't know. It's Nintendo logic. You know, let's get our Gus Bellows out because there's some good money in here. I think like 20 rupees. There it is. And then... Oh, I see. oh there's another pile right there. And another 20 rupees, of course. And we have two Armo statues. So we're going to be having a little bit of a fight ahead of us. I hate these guys. And I completely missed that barrel. But anyway, let's pull on the switch. Destroy every single barrel in this room because I want some good stuff. Anyway. Come on. No, don't jump. You want to run. And now we can bring the time shift stone with us because the other door has a electric fence that we can't go through with the time shift stone. Yep. Alright, in order to take care of these Armos, I only like to activate one at a time and then just take care of them. It'd be much harder to have two Armos at the same time attacking you. I mean, if that's the strategy you want to go with. I personally like that strategy. And make sure you circle around in the time shift area, or else the beam, I mean, the Armos will deactivate. And that will be a bit of a problem. And how did I miss that again? Alright, take two. Oh, he always turns around. Right as I want to attack him, he always turns around. It's like he knows I'm going to go for his weak spot. Maybe these guys got a little bit smarter. I don't know. Maybe that's why they put these armos here and the others in the center mine. Anyway, I'm just make I'm not making any sense. Can I attack him? Oh, come on. Sword didn't read that. I could have destroyed him in that. Alright. Oh, he's on the other side. I'm not going to do this. Oh, couldn't do it. Oh, that was a nice dodge. Okay, there we go. Yes, there we go. 
And of course we're destroying two armos, we deactivate the gate. I mean, that, that makes sense, right? I don't know. Do we get anything up here if we move the time shift stone? I never checked. Sit so down there. Nope. Nada. This, they're just blocks there for being blocks. I don't get why they did that, I don't know. They have to fill the world somehow. And now we've placed the time shift stone in the pedestal that we initially saw when we entered in. And for doing so... I don't know what this creature is called. I have no idea what this is. It's probably some sort of Zelda enemy, maybe like a shark. I don't know. The mouth is open. And look, there's some pieces of the old ship. And the door opens. A report master, the power of the time shift orb to be doing. Really? I recommend going outside to further investigate. Alright. And of course, now that we put the time shift stone there, we can't go back the way we came. I don't know why we need to. I mean, there's a door right there. So, for activating the time shift stone, all we get out of this. Really, all we actually get out of this is the ability to investigate the mast. I have information to report, Master. There's a 60% probability that these masts and these sails are from the ship that protects the neighbor's flame. You can now set your dousing ability to search for the ship that holds Nehru Flame. Yep, all we get out of that is the ability to douse for Nehru's Flame. I mean the ship. Oh my gosh, if only we could just douse for Nehru's Flame and be like right there in front of us. Actually, I take back what I said. It's not the only thing here. Um, I mean, if you want 100%, there is something else that you can grab. And it's a Goddess Cube. So above the door, there is a claw shot target, so we need to just claw shot our way up to the top portion of the jaw. And right there, perched at the very end of the tongue, if you want to call it the tongue, is the goddess cube. Technically it is a tongue. It's a tongue of the stronghold. I mean, you got the upper jaw there and the lower jaw beneath, and there's like what's in between two jaws of this tongue. But anyway, now that we got the goddess cube, we're actually done completely with Pirate Stronghold. Yes, we're never going to come here ever again. That's it. That really is all there is to this place. And if you ever need to grab the Goddess Cube and you don't do it now, I mean, there's a bird statue right there, so you can just always fly down here directly. So yeah, that's... Oh, I think there's also some cicadas here if you want to grab them. But I mean, you can find cicadas everywhere in the desert, so... Yeah, there's no... There's nothing else here to do. So... With that being said, I will see you guys in the next part where we go search for the boat. Alright, you guys. We're gonna go search for the boat. So my ship wasn't here either. Yeah, there was only the mass and everything like that. You found a clue? You know the place, some kind of thing called... You know, dowsing. This time we'll definitely find my ship. Yep, if you can't remember from a couple... I mean, from the last time I was recording, I don't know. He said his ship is invisible, so now with the dowsing ability, we can actually find where the ship is. Yes, we've searched around this entire sea for the ship, and now we're only going to be searching it with our sword. All that work just to get a dowsing ability. But I mean, it was fun work. So I guess if you're having fun on the job, there's really nothing to complain about. And I was having fun. So the ship is all the way over there. Uh, this can be a little bit difficult, and I mean, not difficult, but tedious, and it can be very easy. I find that sometimes it's like a hit or miss on if it's te like tedious or if it's easy. I was just about to say teasy. But, uh, yeah, but, oh, uh, that's really good commentary right there. Um, just getting to the ship from this direction, it's kind of difficult because you have to maneuver around all these rocks and seeing all these exploding barrels, so... If there's any exploding barrel in your way, just destroy it. I'm gonna destroy this one because I don't want to move around all these rocks. Rocks, I've got a rock. And I wonder if you can run over these. Oh, yeah, you can run over, right? You can run right over them, they die. 
And we're getting close to where the ship is. It's right over there. So I find that the key to finding the ship is that to not get too close to it. So keep your dousing ability on. And once it starts beeping more frequently and you're getting close to it, then you want to pull out your cannon and attack it directly. Because once you attack it with the cannon, apparently the, invinc the invisibility cloak like is disabled. Apparently. Alright, so getting really close. And you will notice that your little target thing... Like, if you aim, or aim it around, I miss the ship, because the ship moves around if you get too close. Um, you'll notice that if, once you get close enough, your reticule, or like your little targeting thing, it starts to be, like, starts getting cut off, and it's getting cut off because you're actually in the vicinity of the ship, and man, that thing is getting really close to me. Wow, it's like right there. <laughs> I didn't realize that my, I was that close to the ship, uh, oh well. And this guy just got really ominous. But anyway... Here's the next dungeon, the fifth one, the sand ship. Woohoo!